Are machines that make seltzer even worth it? Let's look at the environmental and the economic impacts of your options. I'm going to assume on all of my calculations that you're drinking 200 liters, this is a liter bottle, 200 liters of seltzer per year. That's about three of this size bottle every two days or so, or the equivalent of one and a half cans of seltzer per person per day. So that worked out to be about 200 liters a year. Okay, let's start with the canned stuff. For the canned stuff, it works out to be, depending on the brand and where you buy it and whether you're buying it in a 12 pack or a 36 pack or whatever, it works out to be a little over three cents per ounce if you're drinking canned seltzer. It'd be around $211 per year in canned seltzer. Now, I converted, as you saw, from ounces to liters to make it easier to compare to the soda stream. I did the math for you. So what about a seltzer maker? Is it even worth it? Well, depends on the brand you buy and how much it costs you to begin with. But as an example, this soda stream, this is one of their mid-range models, it's around $140 US to buy it. I can get about 50 liters per one CO2 canister. So at the back of every one of these, there's a refillable CO2 canister like this. It costs about $15 every time you refill it. So to get the same 200 liters of seltzer, like I did with the cans, I would need to have my original set, which is the bottle with the maker and one CO2 cartridge, and then I would need three more refills on the CO2 cartridge. So one of the main differences you're gonna find when you start comparing canned seltzer to a make it at home soda option is that the seltzer you make at home has no flavoring and most of the time people choose cans of seltzer that have a flavor to them so if you want to really compare apples to apples or cans to cans then you're going to need to look at how much would it cost you to make let's say a cherry flavored seltzer at home versus buying it in the can so if you were to mix your home your seltzer your soda water with cherry flavored bitters, that would give you a cherry flavored soda. So if you were to mix your cherry bitters at five dashes, doo, 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 you, this is a five ounce bottle. If you were to use a five ounce bottle to flavor your homemade seltzer, you can get 50 servings of seltzer out of one of these bottles. Another factor we haven't talked about yet is the ecological one. If you were to drink 200 liters of canned seltzer per year, that's 565 aluminum cans per year that you are putting into hopefully recycling if your, if your community has recycling or potentially some of those may go to waste. There's a very large environmental impact to making these cans. Not only do they have to be made and then recycled and then made and then recycled, but that you know, the ink, the transportation, the weight of moving all of these, it's a really large ecolo ecological impact in order to buy it by the can. Okay, so the takeaways here are that if you drink plain seltzer water, buying your own soda machine will pay for itself the very first year. If you were to drink only mostly your flavored seltzers, then it will take you approximately four years in order to break even. But by year five, you're actually saving money. However, the big cost that's also in there that maybe not be directly out of your pocket, but during those four years before it actually pays for itself, you're also not putting all those cans uh, into the recycling, not using that much. So since it's up to me, I would go with the soda stream whether you flavor or you don't flavor, simply because it's better for the environment and after four years, it's actually cheaper too. Well, this is what happens after the magic. This is Nudie. Hi, Newton. Newton is a very good editor and he helped. That's what I do, I sit around and edit.